I'm back again to talk about another episode of The Mandalorian. This time, the sixth episode of season three. Spoilers aplenty, the biggest one being, this show still sucks. If you're liking The Mandalorian season three, there's no accounting for good taste or bad. You should walk away from this video, it's gonna be negative. Um, I have a chip on my shoulder. I am hate watching this show, so it's kind of just a way for me to burn off some of the rage and anger I experience on a week-to-week -week basis. Could I walk away? Absolutely. But I watched every season of Lost because I hate myself. So I'm going to force watch Mandalorian sit there upset because a once great show has been completely burned to the ground at this point. Season 3, Episode 6 is a trash heap. There's really nothing good in it, and we're gonna break down the episode as a whole. I took notes because I, I, I honestly watched this show now and don't retain a single thing about it afterwards because it's so nonsensical. Nothing really makes sense at all is what I'm saying. Uh, there's story beats, of course. They don't function the way a normal show does. There will be plot points resolved in completely different shows, like, Mandalorian cliffhangers from season two are done in Boba Fett. There will be episodes of both series with different characters in the lead. For instance, the book of Boba Fett started out as a show about the titular character, Boba Fett, but by the time it was done, it was about Mandalorian and about the cool female side character of Boba Fett. Now here we are with the Mandalorian and the same thing's happening. He's a shell of his former self, which Really was kind of a shell to begin with because he never takes his helmet off, so he's really not much of a character. Grogu, or Gragu, terrible name, now completely played for merchandise, has zero purpose on the show, somehow has become more like a baby than ever before. Complete with little like <coughs> noises, constantly flipping around like a dumbass. I can't stand it. I hate this thing now, and I used to love it. I used to want to collect the little little dolls and stuff. This, this set was about two minutes away from becoming a complete collection of baby Grogu shit. <laughs> no, I'm joking. No, it, I wasn't that bad. <laughs> Regardless, the show is. Oh, and the point I was eventually going to get to is it's about Bo-Katan. It's very much her show now, and she's about the only good character on it. They've made sure of it. Let's start things out, though, with a nice Romeo and Juliet-esque space intro. I guess is what you would say. We open this episode with a space fish called Wanda hanging out on a ship on a cruiser and she's just kind of lounging in one of those fish back to tanks. She even eats a fish at one point, kind of a celebratory snack. The thing releases itself, she's on a throne and uh-oh, someone comes on the comm. It's a bunch of rogue Mandalorians. It's Bo-Katan's old crew. They're now rogue. They're now freelancing. Doesn't matter if it's a good guy or a bad guy paying, they just want that cash money. Ain't nothing funny about what they're doing here though. They're here to recover a stowaway. At first the captain pushes back this uh, Davy Jones daughter sort of character. She's like, uh, I don't have him, I don't have him. And then he comes running in. Very bizarre scene because she seems very motherly and he seems like a teenager. So you have this bizarre fish romance, a fish mance, and it ends before it begins, thankfully. And then the title comes up and we don't have to go back to that ever again because it kind of disturbed me. After the intro love affair, or I guess fish affair would be more appropriate, we're back with Bo-Katan, little Grogu or Gragu. I never say his name right, I don't care to look it up. And Din Djarin himself. This is great how it's framed up. Um, we, we really do a good job now of showcasing what a pathetic idiot the Mandalorian is. We got Boca front and center flying the craft. The spaceship, by the way, is much more plausible than the stupid thing that we have Din Djarin flying in. The one-seater with the baby booster in the back, even though he sits on his lap the whole time now. Din Djarin in this scene, how it's framed up, he's just in the corner, like one of the Star Trek red shirts, just kind of fiddling with things. At one point he puts his finger up on what is clearly a sticker, like he's gonna do something, but nothing happens at all. It's not touch screen, it's just, it's just like a sticker. He's like, uh. in all honesty, Bo-Katan probably put him there for Mandalorian to just kind of play with, like a kid in the corner. It's just, this is just, these are the framing devices I look at and I just think, why? Who is this cool? It's a freaking TV series. When you're making a series or a movie in a fantasy world, 
Make your characters cool. They have they have the technology. They have the cameras. They have the directors. You can say, okay, we're going to open the shot. Bo-Katan's cool. She's got her leg up. She's flying the craft. Maybe Manda's just chilling in the back. Sharpening his blade. Working on his guns. Something manly. Something, something baller. Instead, no. He's like off in the corner like a receptionist. I was expecting him to start taking orders. Or filling prescriptions. This is Bo-Katan's office. Din Djarin speaking. How can I help you? Uh-huh. Okay, sweetie. I'll get right on that. He's got the long fingernails. Okay, goodbye. I'll patch you through now. It's pathetic. They're heading down to Fantasy Planet to go see the other Mandalorians, the, the fallouts that we saw at the beginning, the intro of this episode. Because Bo-Katan now, helmetless, because she's a daywalker like Blade, She's both Mandalorian and rogue Mandalorian. She can walk between both worlds. She's like Edward from Twilight. She sparkles, she shines, she's beautiful. And I love, I love Kate Sackhoff. She, she is absolutely stunning on the eyes. Every time she saunters in, I'm just, I'm just all in with that. Um, Din Djarin's an idiot. He's, he's just a shell of a man now. They're in this little shuttle that they're forced into by this mysterious new ownership going on on the planet. They're taken down and the doors open to what looks like something out of a bad Willy Wonka knockoff. This, this little room with the tables and the aliens doing drugs. It's very surreal. And off in the corner of what appears to now be a Saturday Night Live skit is Jack Black and Lizzo. Jack Black and Lizzo are in this. Because of course they are. We had Tim Meadows in the last episode. People are just all over, just coming and going. There is no structure or tone to this. The first season was like a Wild West Star Wars thing. Din Djarin was this cool, badass bounty hunter. He made, he made Boba Fett look like an idiot. It was awesome. Now we fast forward two seasons. It's just this awkward middle child stuck between the shitty prequels and the god-awful sequels. And it's trying to like play off of both of them. Like we're building stuff up to disappointment but we're not forgetting the past disappointment. Instead of focusing where they did initially, which was right in that middle where everything was nice and cherry. Episodes four, five, and six, the OGs. They played off it beautifully and now they're just, they're going like this and I hate it. And there's no structure and there's no semblance of narrative. So this episode, it's a fucking fetch quest again. They're treated to Lizzo and King Jack Black. I, I, I really don't care enough to look up the names or what their roles are on this planet. It, it means little to me. He at one point was working for the Empire or something, an Imperial Imperial officer. Now he's, he's a goody two-shoes guy. The planet's thriving. They're doing great. And they have hired their mercenary bounty hunter Mandalorians as an army at their disposal to make sure that no one you know, crosses them. Since they can't apparently have their own army on the planet because of some dumb reason, they have their own mercenaries set in the distance. I'm going to, I'm going to point this out because, um, the plot of this episode is so fucking dumb. I'll, I'll, I'll get, I'll get to it. Anyway, they're going to let Bo-Katan talk to her crew after they've solved the mystery of the island, which is why are some of the old droids doing bad stuff? They're doing some evil stuff, I think. So they have to go talk to the officer who's freaking Christopher Lloyd. Doc Brown, who looks to be 92, is playing this character with evil intentions. We don't know it at first, but it's pretty obvious. He tells these guys to go figure out what's going on with the droids. They, they take their different approaches. Mandalorian starts kicking one. He's like, ugh, ugh, ugh. That one's bad. Because I just kicked him a bunch and now he's chasing after me. So clearly he wouldn't do that if he was under my control. There's an awful chase sequence. Looks like it was filmed on the back of a Nickelodeon studio lot. Uh, awful. Just awful all around. There's weird neon colors going on. Nothing fits. The color grading's all over the place. They take that thing out. Profit? Like, I, I don't know. What was the point of it? They then go to a Mose Eisley tavern, talk to some of the bots there. The droids are all pissed that they showed up. And, and this, this thing just never ends. This story goes on for an eternity. And all I'm thinking is, what is the point? 
The whole reason we're on the planet is to talk to the old crew. Instead, we're doing Looney Tunes adventures. We're doing Tiny Tunes adventures over here. Without the fun and shenanigans. It's just misery. Eventually, all roads lead back to Christopher Lloyd's character. And yeah, he, he, he reveals, uh, I hate you people. I liked the army. I liked the good old Clone Wars day. General Grievous, yada, yada, yada. I have a giant comical size red button right here. All I have to do is push it and all the droids turn evil. What was stopping him from doing it initially? What's his slow roll plan here? And why is there a giant red button and no one's questioning it? It's just so ridiculous. Here's the point I wanted to really get to. This mercenary crew, these bounty hunters for hire, that are just hanging out, eating sandwiches in the back lot of JC Penney's, waiting for something to do. Why couldn't they be on the search for this great mystery that is the angry bots, the Decepticons causing a muck? Why did Lizzo and Jack Black have to conveniently hope for two more Mandalorians to show up so they could say, you two figure this out. We have like 60 dudes over there, but they're, you know, they're on lunch for the foreseeable future. It's so stupid. Speaking of stupid, the episode wraps with them finally going to the crew, who's, again, doing nothing because that's what the Mandalorians do. And Bo-Katan is like, listen, we all need to work as a team. We need to Fast and the Furious this thing, become a family again. Leader, uh, The new leader is like, <laughs> you left us. You went on a hunt for a stupid black saber. That guy's got it. You don't got it. You didn't challenge him for it. And now you want to challenge me? She challenges him. What does that mean? Well, that means they just start open firing in front of everyone, almost killing other members of the Mandalorians during this. It, it just happens. She's like, I challenge. Do you accept? It's like, yeah, I accept. It's so ludicrous. And this fight's okay. It's not the worst. It, it, it's at least something's happening. Mando's just sitting back watching. Din, Din Djarin's like, yep. This used to be my show. I used to have a point. Here, take my saber. I don't need it. You're the real owner anyways. It's yours. So because of some Harry Potter bullshit loophole, Din Djarin's like, oh no, she's actually the real owner of the saber because you see, listen, chill, chill. Listen, here's what happened. I was down in the Mandalorian caves, um, ready to go into the pool and become a, a real Mandalorian again. I know, I know. Don't ask any questions about that planet that no one thought to just check out because they heard from a friend of a friend that it was toxic and you shouldn't go there, but no one thought to just at least touch down and scan the area. I did. It's not toxic. Don't even ask a question about that, though. I'm a full Mandalorian again because I went in the pool. Anyway, while I was down there, I got bombarded by a bunch of bad guys. In comes Boca, and she, she gets the saber... She takes out a guy with it, or four, because he beat me up and put me in a cage, stole the saber. Now she has the saber. She gave it back to me. But really, it's hers, because she defeated the foe who defeated me, even though I'm still alive. But because he took the sword at one point, that's the same as defeat. Because the loopholes are everywhere in this dumb thing, and our whole cult is so ridiculous. I, God, this show pisses me off. It just pisses me off. She gets to walk around helmetless. She looks cool. She looks like the only somewhat intelligent person here outside of the fact that she wants to be part of this dumb tribe. He, though, is just so sad and lame. Like, yay, I'm a Mandalorian again. I get to keep doing exactly what I was doing the whole time, wearing this helmet while I take a shit, while I go get the newspaper, while I go to bed at night. While I do everything, how fun. What is the point? What is the point of any of it? What's the point of this season? So it ends with her in a heroic pose, holding the blade, looking at the camera, winking and saying to us, strong female lead. And then it zooms in slowly on Grogu. It's about time. Well, there's my rant on The Mandalorian Season 3, Episode 6. We're almost done with this thing. I think there's eight episodes. I hope to the gods there's eight episodes. Because this nightmare needs to just be over. And then we can get the book of Bo-Katan. 
We can get the book of the fish lady from the beginning of the episode who has more character development than Din Djarin already. Maybe we get the book of uh, Lizzo. Get the book of Lizzo in the mix. And then on episode four or five, we'll resolve stuff from the book of Boba Fett. And then episode seven or eight, we'll resolve whatever is going to happen at the end of this. Mandalorian. Season three. Season kill me. Let me know your thoughts on this season as a whole in the comments below. Are you just completely checked out now and you only watch this because you need some sort of sanity back in your life? Or are you hate watching it because, again, you're, you're like me. You're, you're dead inside. Like the video if you had some fun. Please subscribe if you haven't. I post tons of movie reviews and TV show thoughts, especially on The Mandalorian, every single week. Love to have you here. Take care. A dum da da dum da da dum dum dum. A skip it ba bum ba ba bum. This show is dumb. Dum 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 dum. This show is fucking dumb. Hey, thanks again for watching the video. Hope you had a good time. If you really like what I'm doing and you want to support this one-man operation, please think about joining me on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. There's even a $1 membership, so if you're like, I, I like the guy, but I don't love the guy, you could start there. And even at the $1 tier, there are 300 exclusive videos that are only for Patreons and YouTube join members. That's right, you could also become a YouTube member. And both of these platforms have the option to support at the Mithril membership, which is my favorite tier offering. If you stick with me for the year, you can get up to four movie requests of your own. I shout your name out in the video, and I mean, I give you a full review. It's a, it's a great time. I think uh, it's fair for both parties involved. So check me out at those places, and thanks again for watching.